just a casual talk. So yeah, it's a podcast. I don't right? have any thought process, so to say. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean. Welcome to the show. Start Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> nice. So yeah, how's life? How has uh, the COVID nineteen situation affected you? Well, honestly, it hasn't really affected me because I can um, see that. Yeah, <laughs> I like to. I like solidarity. So okay, I was not like this before, but. I don't know, I kind of, can I say evolved into sort of an introvert. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you you're saying know? that you were never an introvert? No, I don't think so. Nah, you were a social person, yeah. Do yeah, extra. I think I was just uh, at a point where I'm act- I was actually trying to figure myself out. Yeah, I... I, I I realized that being an introvert works the best for me, for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It works for a lot of people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they just don't, um, they just, it just takes a while for them to realize it. Some mm-hmm. never do. What do you reckon? Yeah, some, some never do. I mean, they just um, keep kind of um, hurting other people, getting hurt by other people. Um, lying to themselves, lying to others, you know, just like that. It's just, they just don't realize it. Mm. But I, I, I felt like um, having a small circle of friends and um, being an introvert is the best for my peace of mind and good for my spirit and my soul. <laughs> okay. That sounded so personal when you um, said that. <laughs> I'm not going to dig into details though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, where are you exactly right now? Like, I mean, you know, which area and how has um, it affected your day-to-day work? Well, I live in Georgia, like the South of the U S and in a city, city called Columbus. Okay. Uh, pretty late back city if you compare it with you know the big cities like New York and Washington and other places Mm. I mean pretty much it's a very routine driven life here you know it's just like it's as if we can actually predict predict people's um what do you call it uh lifestyle and what they're going to do during the weekend or the weekdays it's just very routine oriented life here all right they don't uh, generally deviate from it that's how i feel like but you like it though right if i'm part of it well i'm I'm just part of my own thing i mean i (laughs) i um i don't really go out much so okay yeah, my routine is actually, yeah, my routine is like, I wake up, these days I wake up at like 5, 5.30 a.m. You go to gym, right? You work out quite, quite frequently. Yes, yes. I, I, I work out first thing in the morning, so I go to the gym. Since my gym is open now, I have a small home gym as well, but um, gyms here in Columbus, they're all open. So okay. I go to my gym, try to go there early in the morning to avoid the, the crowd. Mm. Yeah. So I go to the gym, I come back home, and then I uh, basically Chatu is at home, right? She's been home for um, almost three to four months now because of this COVID thing. Okay. Chatu, so. Chatu is my daughter, and she, oh. is, she just turned 14. Um, this May, and she's in high school right now. Okay. She's going to be a sophomore um, next year. Nice. Like, actually, okay. the school year is going to start in three weeks, and she's going to okay. be a sophomore. Yeah. So it's kind of exhausting mm. uh, to live with a 14 year old hormonal teenager. It's, yeah, yeah exhausting. So, <laughs> okay. So I try to. <laughs> Um, make my peace of mind with my paintings and uh, Netflix. 
Okay, Netflix paintings. Yeah, I was gonna get into paintings. So, well, you're you're known uh, in Georgia. You're known as a painter, right? But I personally know you as yeah, in the city. Yeah, in Columbus City. Yes, but as a painter. Yeah. Me, I personally know you first as a singer or musician, and mm-hmm. then a great baker, and now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're a paint. I've been shifting professions. No, but you you're good at what you're doing. So, uh yeah, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into painting and you can talk about your music and baking too, but well, well how I got into painting was purely um I don't know, I mean it's just uh it's just the way of uh, now I feel like it's the way of universe preparing me to you know, into a transition, because um, when I met my husband um, five, six years back, um, so we decided that uh, we're going to move to the U.S. after we got married. And uh, at the time that I had applied for my visa to come here, for some reason, it was taking so long, and I had quit my day job already, and I was just feeling really depressed because, you know, we were apart, yeah. and I yeah. was just dr- just dying to reunite with um, Rob. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. I felt like I just needed to do something, but music was just not it. Cause it was, um, it was a, I came to a point where I felt like you just have to um, renew uh, doing it by yourself. You just have to put in a lot of effort and you have to kind of depend on so many people to, you know, to write a song, compose a song, and then you have you know, to record it, master it, mix yeah. it. So this is a huge process. It's kind of thinking about it was kind of stressful for me. So I, I, I needed something else to um, channel all this negative energy. Okay. I needed something else. So I started sketching first, yeah. like with charcoal and just pencil sketches. And I have always been kind of passionate about art but I Uh never really um, pursued it that way not even as like a hobby but then I started to um, sketch and I felt like it gave me like great satisfaction to do it like I used to get up and I used to look forward to waking up and starting on a sketch okay Um, so that's how I basically started and after I got to the US it opened up like a whole new, uh, I don't know, a whole new world to me because we have so much art supplies here. I mean, I know. compared <laughs> to Sri Lanka, you don't even have dedicated art supply shops, right? Maybe one or two. Yeah, but but here, limited, yeah. yeah, the possibilities are like limitless. I understand. You know, if you want to work on a uh, um, kit take art as a profession so so I just went crazy with it I started painting um, I started on acrylics and uh, then I realized my uh, strong traits I like to um, paint florals and landscapes so I just okay so I just stuck to that and I when I when I first started I started with portraits but I shifted totally into floral okay. and landscape. Yeah. So that you you'd say that that is your speciality for the moment. Yeah, because it makes me feel more therapeutic. Like it's just yeah, very therapeutic for me to paint flowers and landscapes. So stuff related to nature. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how many uh, paintings have you uh, completed by now? Quite a lot, I assume. Yeah, you can see the wall behind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with most of your work because, you know, I follow you on Instagram and Facebook. So, yeah. yeah. I have about 
all my entire catalog is on Instagram and I have about some thousand posts. So I must have um, at least painted, let me see. Yeah. 1,162 posts, so at least 1,000 pieces, (laughs) small ones, big ones, yeah. Because that's, okay, and the the reason that I was able to do so much paintings was so after I got here, my husband got deployed to first Afghanistan and then um, went to Riyadh. And he's been away for a very long time. It's been two years since he was in Riyadh. And he, he was supposed to come back about two months ago. And the COVID struck, struck here. So he got stuck there after COVID got struck. Okay. You know, so. Then again, a lot of negativity, frustration, everything. I was just, you know, so I had to keep painting to keep my sanity. <laughs> Yeah. So at the same time, does it make you feel good that he's out there for a good cause? Does it make you feel proud? Yes, I'm, I'm okay. very proud of him. Actually, he just got appointed as the battalion commander. Is it different to uh, live with a, a soldier? Oh, very much. Yes, very different. Uh, we what have are the to positives? Be very okay. Positives are like um, we're very organized. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. That's good. Yeah. They're very organized, methodical. You basically it's just that um he's wired in a certain certain way. It's just it's very easy to deal with things the way he deal um with more, more situations. So um we are kind of getting the hang of um I don't know. It's very different uh, from how we deal with things in Sri Lanka. Very straightforward. <laughs> okay, I do. But, I totally do. Yeah. I suffer from OCD, so I I, I fully get it. Yeah. Apart from OCD, I mean, I, I really really um, love the fact that he has OCD because it made I was such I was such a messy person when it comes to you know my filing and oh my gosh and he 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 kind of transformed me into um, something else. <laughs> Is it at yeah. like a Sheldon Cooper level or? No, not so much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he is, um, he hates clutter. Yeah. So do I. There is something lying around. He wants at least them to be lying somewhere organized. It's not like that he washes his hand like every, um, 10, 15 minutes, not like that. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> not like, oh, of course. So if, if I uh, compare him with you, no, he's not like that. Okay. He's, he's very OCD about um, keeping the house neat and clean. I feel you. And yeah. his uh, filing in his office, the gym. Oh my God, and especially his garage. Like everything has to be and the way he places his shoes has to be faced uh, in a certain way it's actually he told me it's a korean thing oh by the way he is um half he has german roots okay. as well he's half korean so all right so i see a has- very little korean resemblance on him though you you can tell when when you know when you know but yeah you were saying something sorry yeah, so I think most of his traits have, has been passed down from his mother as well. I think that apart from being in the military and um, the fact that he's very disciplined has passed down from his mom to him. Okay. Has been a very, he, he has had a very strict childhood uh, with his mother. And Koreans uh, are and highly mother. organized, Koreans. Like I've yes. had many classmates back in the day. And 99% of them are organized. So I'm assuming that it's a mix of both. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your paintings. Like, I mean, you've been featured on national or local television over there. So like, I mean, you've been recognized yes. to some extent and you're only growing. So that's a big deal for, you know, Sri Lankans down here. 
you may not feel that, but uh, there are thousands and it's... hundreds of uh, painters, females, who want to be where you are. But because I know you personally, I know that, like, I mean, it's normal to you, but tell us a little bit about it. Uh, first of all, I have to say that um, I am very thankful for this small community here in Columbus for, like, welcoming me into their small art circle and um, treating me like one of them, you know, even though that, you know, I just, just came from a country that some people never even heard of, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you still and, get that when you like uh, walk around and meet like new people and when you tell them where you're from, do they? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you about 70% uh, haven't heard True. Um, of Sri Lanka, yeah. I mean, especially the young, younger generation, no, but the older ones, I think they don't. people who have been, uh, like there are a lot of veterans here, like war veterans, okay. I, when I talk to them, they immediately know what Sri Lanka is and they know it as Ceylon. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, the, the younger generation, they, they have no clue about okay. Sri Lanka. Okay, they don't have a clue, okay. No, they don't know. They With don't all know. the technology around them, okay. Yes, I don't think Sri Lanka gets it um, matters. It's not much yeah. in the yeah. news, you know? True. We are not, yeah. I had a friend, like, I knew her for two and a half years. I realized that she thought that Sri Lanka was, like, a part in India, like like a state yes, or something I like that. that too. And that was yes. so funny. It took two and a half years for us to figure that out. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah people like that, too. Yeah. Um, I have um, some people ask me whether uh, Sri Lanka is a part of India. And mm -hmm. I tell them no. Hell no. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I have not. <laughs> that is my reaction all the yeah, time. That pisses it's me like, off. We are separate. Like, we are, are so not different. Like them. <laughs> yeah. yes. I, I have nothing against Indians. You know, they're nice people. And, you know, they have a great culture, a great country. Um, they have a lot of good things and things that doesn't work for me. So, you know, that's, that's, that's how yes. we have get their reaction, right? True, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know a lot of people um, asked me if it's a part of India. So, yeah, I was, I was saying that I'm very thankful for this community for just letting me in and letting me, letting me be a part of their, um, little art circle okay and i have i have to say that i have had so much support in such a short period of time and i'm thinking um uh, i had my family my friends and a lot of people in sri lanka i struggled a lot when i was doing my music for basically probably about five years five to six years maybe Okay. But within a short period of time here, um, within two years, I I I feel like I've achieved something. Yeah, you were featured on TV. I mean, level. not once but twice, right? On TV, yes, twice. Yes. Yeah. Um, just leave being on the television aside, but the fact that. Um, we, we have these monthly auctions. So, okay. so far, um, I have sold a couple of pieces um, during every auction, um, art auction. And uh, I have shipped um, to other states as well. Okay. Yeah. So, not only in Georgia, I have like... Um, I have a piece going out tomorrow to actually Pennsylvania, which is really nice, cool. Okay. And, yeah. So I feel like people are accepting me more. I feel more accepted here for some reason. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Please. I mean, like, there's no, there was no discrimination saying, oh, she's an outsider. I mean, why should we let her in? Why should we let her be a part of our gallery? Nothing like that. I haven't felt any discrimination well, whatsoever. Well, yeah, that's, that's something great about the USA, right? I mean, I, I understand that a lot of people will not agree with me because, you know, they consider the states to be a racist country. But 
these are the positives, right? Yes, definitely. If um, if you really want to achieve something and if you have the will and the commitment, it's a great place to be. Your paintings uh, in Sri Lanka, were you recognized for your work or was it too early? Oh, uh, yeah, it was way too early. Like, um, I just um, started getting uh, familiarized with the techniques and you know, different art styles and stuff. So I was just kind of experimenting in Sri Lanka and uh, no, I don't think um, I was recognized in Sri Lanka because I didn't even um, try because I was just trying to get over a phase through mm. my art um, in Sri Lanka. You know, it's just trying to uh, keep my mind away from all that negativity, just, you know, quitting my job and waiting for the visa to process. So it's just... I, I didn't, uh, no, I never intended to like sell my art in Sri Lanka. Are you, are you planning on having an exhibition sometime in the future when, when, you know, the COVID situation is back to normal or under control? Yeah, that's what I was actually planning this summer. Like um, I was actually, I was telling you, right, that I need to yeah. uh, find a place we for me plan, to stay. Yeah. I wanted to kind of um, travel with you guys to yeah. different places like historical places and you know maybe get a nice snapshots and paint um those landscapes that's that's what i was planning to yeah one day okay. i think i would like to do that don't you feel like you already have enough paintings to um have an exhibition even a small i one? do but i don't know whether they will actually appeal to the sri lankan art enthusiasts because they have people here have very uh, different tastes like they love flowers like okay here most women they have a favorite flower and they nice. would love okay. yeah they have a favorite flower and then they like to they most of them have their favorite animals like they love birds yeah some people are crazy about hummingbirds you know and and they're very passionate about the columbus city so any landscape paintings, we have this place called the River uh, Downtown um, Columbus. Okay. The Chattahoochee okay. River. So people love that kind of art. Flowers and some people even um, want me to paint their home. Nice. Okay. Have you done that? Yeah. Yes. Yes, All I right. have. And um, and they're passionate about in the instruments. Like I have a, a client who who is in the orchestra, a okay. community, a Columbus community orchestra, and he want he wanted me to paint a piano for him and a French horn. His okay. instrument is French horn um, in the orchestra. So yeah, so they are right. kind of attached to things. As opposed to Sri Lankans, I don't know whether it comes from a culture that, you know, we're not supposed to be attached to things so much. I often mm -hmm. wonder why we, as Sri Lankans, we don't really appreciate art that much, let yeah. alone even sometimes music. I don't think people really appreciate music in a very deep level. I mean, on mm -hmm. the surface, yeah, if you want to go to, you go to a party, you have to have music, you want to dance, but it's just, just, that's it. I yeah, it think. makes sense. I mean, when you look at the industries yeah. and where they are right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Sri Lankans appreciate art in a deeper level. There are a few though, right? I mean, there are a few people who does that, but most of them, they just like to, the music is just like have, for them to have a good time. I just wanted to like say that Americans, they, they enjoy art in a very deeper level. Mm hmm especially in Sri Lanka, where people are not um, very enthusiastic about it. You just have to create uh, the in enthusiasm in them. True. Got to get creative and um, go about it as, as a community. That's, that, is, that is one bad quality about um, the Sri Lankan culture is that they try to always achieve things solo. True by themselves without, you know, they try to man the whole ship together. I mean, just uh, as one person solo, you know. True. 
you have to like do it together. Yeah, we need to uh, improve on that. I totally agree with you when it comes to that. Yeah, supporting each other. That is the this the most beautiful thing about here, you know? Like I have local artists here who has bought my art. Okay. Yeah. And and they they have they also have this uh, habit of trading art and they post mm -hmm. it hey I swap my piece with this artist because I really absolutely love this piece you know and okay. it's another idea too like you can do art swaps with other artists I think. how can we improve this in uh, Sri Lanka like how can we get people to uh, get interested in you know all forms of art why do you think it's think not happening as expected it, it's an education system okay. It's an education system. I don't think as um, kids, we are taught to appreciate art. Oh, hell yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not. I mean, it's true, we have a subject, but we just take it because, I mean, we have a couple of choices and, you know, we just go with the flow and there is no purpose, there's no meaning. Mm -hmm. So that's it. But I'm telling you, talk to my daughter, she took art for two years. I mean, you can, they can choose um, two subjects for, uh, since they start middle school. Okay. You know, so they have a choice. Yeah. And uh, they're actually taught from probably 10 to 11, from even Probably even, I don't know the kindergarten system here, but what I have okay. experienced is um, yeah. from middle school, uh, they they are being taught, they are being well-groomed by this okay. education system. And right. it's not like they have to talk over their textbooks. Uh -huh. They are getting uh, graded by, even the attendance is a part of their grading system, okay. right? So. Uh -huh. The attendance, behavior, and then the amount of homework and the assignments that they complete, the, the grading is just not a test paper for them. Okay. <clears throat> if you know. I understand, yeah. Mm, the teachers are like uh, always um, part of something else other than the, you know, the subjects that they teach, they, they okay. do cheerleading, they do these extracurricular activities and clubs, and mostly they're very passionate. The teachers are very passionate here. All right. So Sounds I like they, they love what they do, most of them. Yes, they love what they do, and they're very, most of them are very kind and concerned. And uh, I think that 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 passion has, is being passed on to the kids through okay. them. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my memories are where most of the teachers that I encountered were miserable. They hated themselves. <laughs> they hated yes, their lives. I don't know. I, it's <laughs> going to be very offensive if I say that. So I, I, I often just sit and think like, Oh my God, the art should have been my profession from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But one of the one of the reasons I when I was a kid, like when I was four, five, six years old, I loved to paint. Okay. I'm telling you, my mother was very supportive of it. But then like I remember, I remember when I was a kid, the first thing I wanted to be was an artist. I clearly remember that. Right? Oh. And I expressed that to my father and he was like, what? Do you know that the artists are the most poorest people in Sri Lanka? He mm -hmm. shut me down. He burst that bubble, you know, <laughs> in a way. What he said that, was true, but I understand what you're trying to mean. Yeah. Yes, but of course he didn't have, uh, what do you call it? He didn't see uh, how the future is going to turn out to be, but that, for an artist, now there are so many possibilities. It's just mm. not just painting on a canvas. There are so many avenues of art, True. including fashion designing and uh, interior decorating and all sorts of other stuff, right? 
he didn't really give any thought to it. And I know that uh, my parents were not the type of parents who I could get career counseling from. Well, okay. You know? Yeah. Definitely not, because uh, they were not the type to sit down and just have a conversation. They were mm-hmm. not like that. That generation, I, I, I feel like they are like that, more or less. Yeah. And me being a person who gets easily bored with things, and I want to learn a lot of things. So I think life is just too short for one profession. True. Honestly. Yeah. So I don't know. I just wanted to do a different thing. So I won't get what the hell out of my mind. Mm. I'm saying, the bottom line, uh, what's wrong? Uh, with Sri Lankans is just that it's not passed on from uh, the education system. They they are not taught to appreciate art. I was going to say my art teacher was mean. Oh my God. My year, second year, third year, fourth year, it was the same art teacher. Okay. Uh, basically, we had only two art teachers for the primary section, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. I had experience with only one art teacher. Even the teacher that used to uh, teach us how to do uh, arts and craft like sewing and stitching uh-huh. those two teachers were the meanest <laughs> okay I mean, it's, it's not how it's supposed to be right yeah it's arts not is, you know, it's just, just you shouldn't be afraid when the teacher walks into the class it's just that's kind of, that's the kind of feeling that we had when yeah. the art teacher walked into the class and i remember when i was i had I have a very good memory about my childhood, um, mm-hmm. you know. So I remember one day I, I, we were asked to draw some women near a well, you know, like a Lindalanga Sangami sort of a drawing, right? Yeah. And I was painting uh, the faces and the skin tone in um, a very light color, okay? Mm. So I think that is my preference because I I, yeah. I personally, yeah. I think I wanted to have lighter skin for myself. So probably yeah, I, I understand. picked it up with lighter tone. And then she came to me like, what is this? What have you painted? The male lance again with the Linda Langa in me? Okay. I didn't know what to say. I, okay. I can't remember my reaction. I was like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you don't feel like uh <laughs> no you know i remember something when i was like in grade two uh i had a funny experience too uh we were asked to draw a farmer so i drew a farmer <laughs> and did you, know, you draw I, an amude or something um no the amude side was all right you know i i wanted to uh detail the farmer so i i drew uh two nipples on him right <laughs> like man nipples <laughs> and uh, then the teacher saw this, right? And then she called me and she's like, what's this? And then I said, that that's <laughs> what we all have. And then she took me to the principal. I was in grade two. Oh my God. <laughs> she, made such a, she made such a big deal about it, but I was totally innocent. I only like, you know, <laughs> tried to render what I had seen. And farmers do have nipples because they're bare bodied. Um, Crazy. I mean, then what did what what did they, what, what did they well, I wonder what um, they think about well, it, the CJ, uh, uh, art and all that? I I don't know. This happened in my class, right? So anyway, the principal was nice enough to uh, advise her on that, and it was like off. Oh, but you know, that did like scare <laughs> I me. I know. Yeah. That's the kind of experience that I had with all these, um, you know, art subjects. In school, so how are we supposed to appreciate it? Mm-hmm. Let alone, like you know, you, she's telling us that that's a certain color for everything, and you can't experiment. You can't. Uh, you you have to like draw in a frame or in between lines. And there's no coloring outside the lines. So yeah. that's the kind of impression mm-hmm. that she gave us about art. So I don't think any one of, of my friends, even though that I have seen such um talented there were girls who could um paint and draw like crazy right okay Okay. i don't think anybody wanted to become an artist even though that Mm -hmm. they had had it 
yeah. Because, um, yeah, there is no inspiration and or motivation. So, how are we supposed to appreciate it? True. I agree. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, wonder si- what the situation is like right now. Your daughter is schooled for a couple of years down here, right? So, what was it like with her generation, the teachers in her generation compared to ours back in the day? Uh, well, she went to first two years, she went to Asian okay. um, International. And then uh, for the last couple of years, uh, she was in Gateway College. Oh. So I think it was a slightly yeah, better, even better. though it's kind of the same education system, the British system. A levels, all levels, and, and also uh, teachers who, who retired from uh, local institutes. So. Yes, teachers who retired <laughs> from local schools are teaching in international schools. So, um, not I won't say that it was exactly the same. The it was better for her, better for her okay, as in terms good. of um, extracurricular activities and. Uh, she really loved her teachers and there were some young teachers okay who, who kind of um, express themselves in a different way than the older ones so it's like 50 50 you have like 50 percent retired teachers from um, our public schools and then you have like 50 percent uh, young teachers so yeah they're kind of they kind of, I think it's kind of balanced in a way, so that they are disciplined, uh-huh. but uh, the younger teachers are more understanding here. But I'm telling you, here it's a downside. Here is like kids are uncontrollable. Okay. Because the teachers are not like how <laughs> uh, Sri Lankan teachers were back then. They, they kind of, I don't know, they can walk all over you. They can threaten you. They, they do, you know, all sorts of stuff that is not acceptable for us as, you know. Well, anybody, I reckon. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I'm, I'm not saying that Sri Lankan... It's a, I think it's the culture more than the education system, right? It is the culture yes. that we grew up in, the, the respect for elders and... I like that part. Me too. About our culture. Because of that, teachers here love Chatu because she is very disciplined. I mean, they they adore her because she doesn't make any trouble. She is the most disciplined child. Oh, <laughs> in, nice. Okay. In the entire yeah. grade. Yeah. So she's only misbehaving with me at home. <laughs> but at school, she's like a mouse. Okay. Well, that's, that's yeah. all right, as long as uh, it happens at home, I guess. Yeah, and, and I know and she's, she's a child that who always wants um, approval. She just, she just wants the teacher to like her. She wants okay. that badly. Yeah, that's the kind of personality she has. So, Do you still uh, practice singing or do you sing? I do. I, I remember sending you a clip. <laughs> but... Uh, I just spend so much time uh, painting and I just kind of get lost in it, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, then the entire day is gone. So, okay. and I, I, I go to bed early cause I want to wake up early. So I, I don't like to stay up. And whenever I remember it, it's probably <laughs> by the time I go to bed, I'm, oh gosh, I need to like record or, you know, find a, a, a track to you know sing this song or record it by the time it's too late so the next day again i start my uh, routine and i completely forget about it unless someone is like on my case mm-hmm. saying oh someone reminds me hey can, can you do this will you do this i don't think um i will make music like how i used to make music a song you composed and uh, wrote got really famous in uh, Sri Lanka, right? Oh, that is Saranga song. Yes, I wrote and composed I was talking about the song that for Saranga. Yeah, okay. Saranga Disasekara. Yes, that's right. So, yeah, that was even that was written about probably uh, about nine, eight, eight, nine years ago. 
um, he came to me because he really liked my lyrics, um, the previous works that I have done mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to lyrics and the melody. So he wanted me to compose a song for him. Okay. And yeah, and he, we did that song long time ago and he really released it recently. Yes, oh, okay. that's right. With it's called Rat in New York. Shot in New York or something, right? Yes, yes. That one, okay. I don't know what, yeah. what it's called, but That's yeah. right, yeah. So yeah, he re-released it. And I think um, I, I, I didn't really monitor the success, but it had so many views on YouTube. But I'm say, I've, I do miss it. I do miss it sometimes. And I do get a craving for, you know, to sing and to perform on and off. But I just, I don't know. It's just that it's very hard to find resources here to record something well like that. i mean as i always I mean, say i'm used to going to like a studio, a studio and let somebody record it and you know mix it mm -hmm. but I, I i'm not familiar with um you know how to record and mix it myself so that, that's well it's not that hard my... now i mean you know i mean we, you, okay. it's, it's still always good to go to a professional Mm -hmm. and uh, get your stuff recorded but like i mean you can get pretty decent results with a home studio setup i mean you can always find someone knows how to mix and get it mixed but you can do like the basic stuff at home with with chatu she can be your she can yeah i know i am encouraging her to play keyboard and you know just perform her favorite songs and keyboard and sing while she does it i encourage that a lot i even Okay, these days she's so into gaming. She has no other world uh, apart from that. So I told her I'm willing to pay her to perform at least a one minute um, song. And now she's, she's working on it now. Oh, nice. Because okay. <laughs> yeah, she's getting paid for it. <laughs> she's quite an artist too, right? I mean, she's been in commercials and she did a music video. I was uh, at the shoot too. She's a very artistic child herself, and she can paint. Um, I think she, she can paint better than me. She's a natural okay. at it, and, yeah. And she can sing, too. Oh. But these days, I worry about kids because each and every talent that they have is being suppressed by social media. Uh -huh. All they want to do is to follow people on TikTok and impersonate them and do whatever they do because that's cool. TikTok was TikTok, banned in India. You know that, right? I know. I heard. I told her that, but I don't think. Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> I don't just think like it this crazy, stupid content in social media. It's just. Mm -hmm. I try to ignore it because if I start to um, see each and everything that she watches, because they're just, I don't know, I think they're really stupid, stupid stuff. But they're not inspiration, I'm telling you. They're getting no. um, yeah. influenced by all this um, useless content. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the younger generation are highly provocative, right? Like whatever they see on social media, they easily believe it, very easy to brainwash them through social media. Yep. So, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening with the younger generation. Their brain is not being stimulated the way it should <laughs> be, you know. How do you think we can uh, get around it? I restricted it uh, during school days, but since she cannot go out, she can't meet up with her friends, she has no time to have fun, no theaters, no movies, nothing like that right so i have allowed her to keep the phone and stay up and play games just because that she needs to get through this um phase this coronavirus crazy mm -hmm. period you know that's why i have loved her but i used to take her phone away and limit her time with the phone when school starts i'm going to go back to that routine okay she sees me like the most horrible person when I do it, but I can't help it. I have to do it. Okay. You shouldn't give your children any a, a technology. I, I don't, un, until at least they're about 12, 13. That's what okay. I think that they kind of 
mature enough and kind of controlling themselves. You are saying that kids shouldn't be using Facebook, Instagram. Nobody uses Facebook. These kids, they, they hate Facebook. Oh, okay. I know that Facebook is old school. Okay. Yeah, they're old school. So they're not really using Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. In most they're cases, watching yeah. all this useless content. Huh. Um, I even, um, I can't remember what, what it's called. FaceTime? No, FaceTime. Downtime, whatever. There's this uh, app in um, Apple phones where you can actually restrict each and every area. It's kind of like a parental control that you have on Apple phones. Now, no, she's a little too grown up for me to do that. She's now she turning 15 that? next year. Okay. Yeah. So, but if you start, if you start doing that, since they're small, they're already used to it, right? So I'm mm -hmm. trying to, I when I try to enforce something totally new that actually restricts a current social media usage, then they, they go crazy. But if you have been enforcing it from younger age, they're already used to it and they know this is the system. This is how it should be. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, it's a sort of a brainwashing process itself, but... You're yeah. actually uh, doing it for a good reason. Like my kids are but, like, you know, five and a mm -hmm. half and seven. So they use the device and, you know, they have a time they can use it. Maybe they're too young for Instagram, but right now they they don't like do anything they're not supposed to. And mm -hmm. I kind of have like access to what they're, what they're watching. So I keep track of what they watch. And if I find something unsuitable for them, I would ask them why they watched it. Sometimes it's accidentally. Sometimes they saw the thumbnail picture and they got curious. So someone recommended it on a different channel. And what I do is I just bluntly explain like good and bad and why is it harmful to them. The good thing is they get it. They haven't gone behind my back so far. Maybe they're too young. But right now uh, they use the device uh, appropriately. And if they want to use it, yeah, no that's longer. the thing. If you're giving them a device, you should um, you should do it wisely. You shouldn't just give give a device just because you want uh, free time for yourself, just because you want to like you know get them off of your back. That's what most parents do. I have seen so many times that parents are just talking somewhere in a restaurant and they give their kids the device and they just that's it. As long as it's monitored and you know what they're watching and what they're getting influenced by, yeah, it's okay. But right now, I know what she's getting influenced. It's just to talk this stupid dance. <laughs> I know. I mean, uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah, like I have an Instagram on my phone as well, right? Yeah. So when I click on that and when I see her homepage, your your explore page reflects who you are, right? True. Like when I go to my explore page, it's all about some nature pictures, paintings, and maybe a couple of couple of food pictures, right? Nothing apart from that. And sometimes randomly they will have some celebrity stuff. Yeah. And then I immediately go and click saying this is not my thing and I then they remove it. Because okay. I yeah. want my export page to be very clean and reflect when I, when I see hers, mm -hmm. I go absolutely crazy. Because right. <laughs> it's this celebrity, that celebrity, and some dance move, and I don't know what. 70% mm -hmm. <laughs> of it is like TikTok videos, some TikTok thing. Yeah, but I know it's trending, and I know that people even do uh, art videos on TikTok, but I have never explored it. I don't have a TikTok account. You rarely come across um, I know it's any art. Probably, is it the number one social media now? Right now it is. It's crazy, huh? Where when we had only probably two hours, maximum two hours worth of um, TV that we could watch Cartoons? when we were kids, right? Yeah. That that because that's that was like from four to four thirty or five o'clock the cartoon 4 .30 time. Four thirty to uh, five thirty, and on some days uh, up to six. Yeah, I remember my my uh, weekends were like were really colorful because of Voltron and Thundercats. Oh, you liked Voltron and oh Thundercats. Oh my god, I love it. Two two cartoons yeah. I love. But they like, should it's like, like a they should make thing. a movie okay. of both. I think. All right. Well, they're working on those yeah. movies, as far as I know. I mean, they've never been successful. Watch on the new Watch on Netflix the series. Right screenplay. Hmm. It's amazing. The new series, 
the Netflix. I I watched uh, one season. Yeah, I, I watched all the seasons, and Chato is rewatching it for the third time. No. Oh, she likes it. I so mean, much. I'm mm, yeah. I had to even get her a watch on T-shirt. She said oh, she okay. likes it that much, and uh, yeah, and my Sundays were even more colorful with Space Nineteen Ninety Nine. That was oh, like my Sundays, yeah. favorites. Um, yeah, the favorites. That sci-fi. was uh, sort of special. I I never really got the chance to uh, follow it properly because I had, um, you know, tuition classes on Sunday. So okay. sadly, I, that I never. That was like awesome. I. Uh, it's almost like Star Trek, like the stories. It's British, so it didn't run for that long, but. It's good. It's pretty good, I reckon. Yeah. I have to tell you that I'm I'm addicted to British shows now. I'm I'm not watching yeah. anything American right now. I'm addicted mm. to British shows because they are they have something about them. I can relate to it. I mean, me too. Like most of uh, what I watch on Netflix are British, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Have you watched Unforgotten? No, not yet. Okay, but it's not on Netflix, so it's uh, I I watched it on Prime. But Prime has a very big collection of British shows. Okay. Uh, from Downton Abbey to, you know, like even BBC um, movies, and uh, I am specifically searching British crime and British forensic shows uh-huh. to watch. I just I didn't finish it because uh, they don't have the latest seasons, but I watched this series called The Silent Witness. Okay. It started in 1996, way uh-huh. before. And CSI or anything was aired, right? And that show is still running. All right. Yeah, about okay. some twenty-five seasons or whatever. And it's so good. I I wake up thinking about that show, okay. and I miss it now because uh, Prime has they, they don't have the latest uh, series. Seasons. How many seasons have you finished? Like, did you start from season one and then twenty-two? Twenty-two. So. Did you start with season one or half? Oh, yes, uh, from 1996. And how, how far have you uh, progressed? I, I um, up, up until the 2017 or 18, probably. So, so I've watched 22 seasons. Holy, how, how do you do that? How, what's the duration of one uh, episode? Is it like a 40 that minute is the thing. One time? So the seasons are not that long. Uh-huh. They one story goes into two episodes, like they're about fifty minutes each. So it's like a movie, like one story is split like split in half. Okay. Yeah, split in half. So they have about five or six of those uh, in one season. Yeah, in one season. That's yeah. another thing that's uh, good about some British shows. They're short, right? Short. Yeah, it's easy to yeah. uh, binge. And either the the best part of it is that. Um, I mean, this show went on for years, decades, but other shows, like, they finish it off before they go stale, which is a good thing, Mm. right? But American shows, they just run it until people get sick of it, until they lose their plot totally. They milk the crap out of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you, I mean, like, the best example is, uh, what do you call it, Lost. Oh, I lost track like half a season too. But I had friends who <laughs> followed it religiously. I followed it very religiously too. Okay. You know, there are so many unexplained uh, avenues in that story. They added so much. And they into couldn't the explain story. all of them, right? They couldn't even ex- explain their main, main plot. Like, uh-huh. what was the island about? I still don't get it. What what was the conclusion? Like, I mean, I still don't know how it ended or what, what, what it was. They were all in a sort of purgatory sort of a place, but uh, we don't know why it happened and how it happened. And um, there are certain um, characters that was kind of, well, what do you call it, the core of that island, right? Like, I can't remember their names, but uh, we don't know how why they were there or how... Uh, they're controlling it or nothing like that. Oh. They just made some crap up just to end the season. I'm telling you, the, it's like this. I, I read an article because I was so frustrated. They have said that 
they had a limit okay. a contract with the state with whatever the producers that they have to finish it within a period mm -hmm. so oh yeah they had limited time but they added so much crazy details so at the end they couldn't explain um uh, their story okay yeah what they originally they intended. The yeah yeah they were writing the show as they go on i think that's what's happening that's how it's with normally done yeah, that's, yeah. how it's, that's how it's normally done that's so, crazy like i i really enjoyed season one and then you know i had to uh, finish university and all that so i i kind of lost i didn't have enough time to uh, follow all the tv shows so that's why i stopped but i'm glad i did because uh, most of the people i know they are still very disappointed yeah seven it years is a nothing, huge so. disappointment yeah <laughs> because it makes you feel like it, the show is even building up even towards the end like adding stuff adding more mysteries right so they just kept adding more questions rather than answers in that show that's how i felt i mean i feel like people, it was uh, produced just for uh, you know the views <laughs> lost watching just lost for ratings series. yeah 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 well, that time is over. People don't accept stuff like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I'm into British shows now. Like, um, and I, I'm also into more lighthearted shows now. Like, I'm watching something called The Grandchester. Grandchester. Okay. Grandchester. The Grandchester. Yeah, it's about a priest who likes to solve crimes. Oh, I may have seen that. Okay, is it good? That you like detective good. stuff, I, right? Uh huh. I love uh, forensics and detective stuff. And also at the same time, the these TV stations, they cancel the good shows for no reason, right? Well, yeah, when they realize that they can't generate enough views, the views that they want, um, they cancel it. Probably. Have you watched the OA? The way they stopped? It's like they were supposed to do the third season and all of a sudden they canceled the show. It mm -hmm. was a very good theory about... Um, how they can transfer their conscience. People transferring their conscience into a different timeline. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Oh, that's my type of thing, huh? But I should check it out. You liked uh, the German series, right? Dark. Did you finish all seasons on that? Yes, they didn't come up with the next season. I don't know why. Season three? Yeah. Oh, did, it just came out on Netflix. Season? Yeah, it just released a couple of days ago on Netflix. Really? I didn't see that because I've been watching Prime and all these British shows and I'm not getting alerted with the other stuff now. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can check it out on Netflix now. It's uh, it's out now. I hope they haven't ruined it. So far, it's been Hopefully like really not. good. Yeah, that's some good TV. It reminds me of Predestination, sort of. But I feel like it's better. I didn't see it coming. I mean, I couldn't guess it. I couldn't predict it. I mean, that's a good show when you can't actually predict. Uh, that's that's what's important, yeah. yeah. Because TV and uh, movies are so predictable nowadays. So. <laughs> yeah. How about baking it's and really cooking? Hard. My there there won't be any point of me working out if I keep baking it, eat, eating all that stuff by myself, right? True, true, true. So I don't, but I do cook a lot, and I try to cook healthy. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that uh, during this whole COVID thing, I probably must have gained about five pounds. That is about two kg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two kg or maybe three kg. I just realized. And like clockwork, I wake up every morning at 5.30 to go to the gym and I go and work hard for one and a half hours. So that I, I know that I have a week left to, yeah. <laughs> to lose uh, at least four pounds before Rob gets back. He had to attend an assessment um, at a different base. Okay. So while he was doing that assessment, he came to visit us. Very, very short visit. Though. Very short. It, and he left. What are your plans with your paintings? Like you continue to uh, do what you do and like you have any target or goal? or? Yeah, most definitely. I think... Um, I will 
start selling it online, like have my own website, maybe an Etsy shop. You know, there are like um, here, it's very marketable as in you have the seasons, right? So yeah. obviously the wealthy people, they, they even change the setting in the houses as uh -huh. um, just to resem uh, resemble the season, like the fall season, obviously Christmas and spring is different, you know? Yeah. So by the time, uh, right now I should be starting like on fall paintings, like pumpkins okay. and owls and stuff like that. Oh, right, so okay. during fall, it's very marketable. Okay. You know, and then and during Christmas, last Christmas, I had a client who, uh, I just, um, you know, we have mini canvases here, yeah. very tiny little canvases. And I just did like a Christmas ornament Okay. on the canvases and I posted it on my Facebook and then somebody like uh, placed an order for like about 20 of them to be given as Christmas uh, souvenirs. So okay. here they kind of like give their family souvenirs, Christmas souvenirs or they hang different ornaments every year. So you can market that sort of stuff during Christmas. Christmas ornaments like um, Christmas trees, winter landscapes, that's the kind of stuff. So when, when the winter's passing, then people are more into florals and normal lands, colorful landscapes. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can sort of like plan yourself for the year, mm -hmm. um, depending on the seasons. It's very interesting. Okay. So yeah, obviously my target is to have my own website and to have a, a bigger kind of um, clientele when it comes to this because we'll be moving from Columbus in a year Okay. because Rob is going to be placed in different base most wow. probably in about another year after he finishes this contract here in Columbus. Okay. So then I have to start all over again with the whole different community. So it's better to have an online presence already true, true. to be prepared for that. But you do have yeah. an online presence, right? Uh, I did, list. in fact, I did uh, uh, mail my some of my uh, paintings to Japan and Germany. So they're going international. So you yeah, are. as long as you have a, like a good online presence, I don't think I'm doing it hundred percent because uh, I'm not using all the resources that I should be using, like making videos. I know mm. that the trend on IG is like people love to watch videos rather than um, uh, they have more views. Yeah. So, I mean, I should be doing stuff like that to gain uh, uh, more audience. Okay. So how can uh, the listeners uh, find you on IG and Facebook and other platforms that... Well, I go as Art by Chintika on... I'll have it just playing on. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, on Instagram. So on uh, Facebook, I go as Chin Brandstetter. That's my art page. Okay. And okay. Um, on Instagram, it's art by Chin. I do have a Twitter account that just goes as Chintika uh, Brandstetter, but I don't post my artwork on Twitter. But I'll be soon having an Etsy shop and my own personal website. Nice. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. I like to think it's a universal force that uh, kind of diverted all my energy into painting because it was kind of preparing me for my transition because coming to think about it, like quitting my job, going through a very frustrating period and channeling my negative energy um, towards art, right? And then it kind of prepared me for this, for my marriage, because I've been married to Rob for five years, almost five years now. And he has been deployed for the longest time. So if I didn't have my art, I would have gone insane. I would have gone crazy because I don't have any family here. His family is in Washington state. His parents don't live in the same state. They're quite far away. They're on the other side of the you know, country. So I'm thinking all that happened, happened for a reason. I know, I know that I, I wouldn't have been able to um, 
continued music the way I used to do music is because it's very accessible, right? To do some uh, thing with regard to music in Sri Lanka. Like even to go yeah. to a professional studio and to do a recording is not, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg in Sri Lanka, right? But True. here it's a different uh, story altogether. And I know you can always have an online presence, but I, I, I cannot, I'm not that <laughs> sort of a person who will like always keep posting videos on YouTube and it's just yeah. not for me. Uh, basically, I think I'm, I'm a kind of person who wants to try out a lot of things and um, I don't know what to call like my personality. It's just that uh, I have so many uh, interests that I want to pursue and sometimes I end up not doing anything whatsoever. Like, I don't know. It's just that my thoughts are all over the place. But art really helped me focus is what I'm trying to say. Finally, I felt like uh, that I'm in a path where I want, I'm not going to get deviated from. Okay. It's probably the fact that people here were supportive and, uh, you know, that there's more opportunities and possibilities here. It's probably that. But I yeah. know that if I tried to pursue an art um, a career as an artist in Sri Lanka, I would have been a starving artist, right, in Sri Lanka. Yeah. I know what you like, mean. Uh, like where people, I, I, I would have been one of those people who sell my art uh, near the Col Colombo University. <laughs> You know that Green place, Street. Like, Green like? Street. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how often do people like uh, reserve time to go visit an art gallery or to the museum for the fact, right? Uh -huh. They don't. These days, probably people live and breathe politics. That is the most popular subject right mm. now. It has always yeah. been for quite a long time now mm. but you know there are hundreds of artists who would like to do what you did how would you like to encourage them and motivate them and advise them on how they can polish their craft get it out there well i think now that uh, we have all these social media that's the plus side of social media right you can market yourself like very aggressively on social media i think if you want to I don't think you should concentrate if you want to become an artist, you should just um, concentrate on trying to get your art on the global platform rather than, you know, trying to sell just in Sri Lanka. I okay. think even, even through social media, probably these days, people can create trends because it's very social media, TikTok or whatever, it's very influential. The only thing that you have to do is to create a trend, right? Just like um, how it happened right after uh, Gautabia came into power, like all those street art and stuff like mm. that. Wasn't that kind of empowering for artists and that it became True. like a thing, right? So you mm -hmm. just have to create, keep creating trends and keep um, practicing. I, I just practice. I paint every day and I'm still learning. There's so much to learn and there's... Um, different types of art that you can do. You don't have to stick to one medium. There's mixed media, acrylic, oil. So just like how it became, uh, the street art became a trend um, right after Gotabe came to power. Like it's it's a, a form of expressing yourself, right? True. I think a lot of people felt good about it and a lot of people said good things about it. They enjoyed it. So the key is to create trends like that, that makes people feel good. Something that resembles our culture, our, uh, who we are. Like it's, it's totally just like, it's, you know, it's how it is here as well. Because people like to buy art and enjoy art which is personal for them and just close to them something that triggers their memory something that um, i had i had a client last a uh, couple of weeks ago who wanted me to do hydrangea flowers because it was the grandmother's favorite flower you got to get personal 
try and experiment what what makes Sri Lankans feel good, you know, just True. just like I'm saying, yeah, just paint historical landscapes, something that uh, reminds you of your childhood, like that. I think you got to um, experiment with things like that, things that that are close to you. Yeah, just don't paint just because you see something. Um, on the internet and just because you saw somebody else doing it just do something that comes out from your heart yeah i mean that that's how i started anyway i just painted what made me feel good then after i came here i just studied a little bit about uh, the culture here and what mm. they like you know what they appreciate so then you can speak to them other people through your art you know mm. but first start with what speaks to you because otherwise you're not going to enjoy it yeah, I understand. So when it comes to uh, the negatives and all the hurdles that you need bypass? Well, at the beginning, you might feel like, okay, nobody wants to, you know, enjoy your art or buy your art. You might, you might feel like, okay, this is just um, not a fruitful thing to do. But I'm saying you shouldn't stop because you got to create that trend and interest in people yourself. Because in Sri Lanka, I'm, I'm talking specifically about Sri Lanka, right? Sri, Sri yeah. Lankan people has to be stimulated. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can't do it by yourself. Like here in Columbus, we do it as a community. You know, we share each other's art. Because we, I have friends who do different types of art. So if okay. you can find other artists who has different styles, you can promote each other, you can do collaborations. So you can't do it by yourself. You have to do it as a team, as a community of artists. Okay. I think that's the most important thing. I don't think that the artist community in Sri Lanka is uh, in sync. I don't think they are. Because you have to work together to, to develop that um, art trend in Sri Lanka. So you can't do it as a person. You have to do it as uh, a whole lot. We have um, artist guilds here, like different galleries that, that artists are a part of. I think okay. there should be more galleries in Sri Lanka, more art right. galleries, right? And like I said, you can't, you can't just as one artist, you can't just open a gallery by yourself. Even mm -hmm. when you keep exhibitions, don't just do a collaboration get together with um if you don't have the financial um aid to fund an entire uh, exhibition yourself get together with a couple of artists who has who doesn't contradict your style you know okay. it can even be jewelry making it can even be any other craft it doesn't have to be paintings so mm -hmm. you get together with different artists and um do a show so that way you have more audience right you will bring more people in yeah. for exhibition because through the other artists there will be more people right that's that's how we actually do it here mostly okay like so that's we, what worked for you right yes that's how you that's got discovered I, yes i actually did Okay, there's another tip I can give you. Like I, I did host an exhibition at my house. Okay. You can always do that. It is the most simplest and the easiest thing to do, right? And actually, I'm telling you 100%, all the people that came here, they all bought something. Okay. Because I served them drinks and snacks and all that, and they had a very good time. And honestly, that, that's how I, everything kicked off. Mm. My neighbor, my neighbor helped me. Okay, this is how I actually, uh, I should have told this before. I have to mention my dear, dear neighbor, Cheryl, Cheryl Braxton. She used to live down at the cul-de-sac in my lane, right? Mm -hmm. I painted a watercolor Christmas card and I put it into her post box. And I have not even seen her because we were very new to the neighborhood at that time. Okay. And then one day she came like a guardian angel and she knocked on my door. 
to come and actually thank me for that card. Right. I mean, nobody so else nice did. I did. Okay. Yeah, I, I put like about five or six cards in the neighborhood, but she came and she knocked on my door and she thanked me. And then she kept going on and on and on about that I shouldn't just paint like that. You should do something with it. That it's okay. beautiful. And she, she just framed that little tiny piece of paper and she still has it. And okay. Uh, well, now she's she's been my biggest advocate. She has about probably easily 10, 10 pieces of mine at her house. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she said, she gave me this idea, let's have an exhibition at your place. You have so many paintings because I had just kept painting, right? And I didn't know what to do with it. It was just lying everywhere all over the house. So she said, okay, okay we'll choose some good paintings. We'll put on a good display and we'll do an art show at your place. And okay. we just got some wines and snacks and a bunch of ladies came and it was a huge hit. That, that was oh. kind of like a real confidence boost that um, I, I got uh, to, I had to kind of like kick, kick it off. Okay. Yeah, so you That's guys can also do that, you know? Because you have friends, you have family, friends of friends, you can invite them. As long as they have, as long as they have food and some <laughs> drinks, people yeah. will come, and you don't have to overly price your art. That's what I did. I mean, I I said uh, this is the normal price of my art. Today, I'm every, everything is like fifty percent off just because y'all came to my place and you're. I, that's how I did it. So basically, about forty people came, and almost all of them bought something. Okay. And some some of them like bought a couple. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to kind of um, stimulate the interest in people. They will, when they come and see something like that, they will, oh, wow, I don't have any art in my, I'm telling you, most people in Sri Lanka, they don't have art in their houses. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Not I mean, they, they, they don't have anything personal, or they, they will just hang some photographs. Mm -hmm. um, nobody will actually go look for art unless maybe they get it as a gift mm -hmm. or you know like a wall hanging or something like that right yes. but that will get people to think oh i don't have it oh my god aralia or whatever and thurium is my favorite flower i would like to have a painting of this in my house mm -hmm. you know things that are close to us like lotuses like um blue lilies blue water lilies which is kind of very close to uh, our culture and the hmm. Kandyan dancers, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's just an idea that mm -hmm. uh, our artists can do. I, I don't think anyone thought of it. When they think of an exhibition, they always think, oh gosh, we have to hire a place. We have to do it in this gallery and we have what mm -hmm. that gallery in Tower, Tower, Tower Rangahala, right? Tower mm -hmm. at the Lionel event or something yeah. like that. That's what immediately comes to their mind, isn't it? Yes. If, if there are like really, really young artists, go to your school and speak to your teachers and you can have the school as a venue, right? True. You can get, a, um, get together with a couple of your friends and do an art exhibition at your school and get friends and parents to come and see you. That's how you should start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you have a big enough collection to show off, you can always do an art show at home. True. Roughly how many pieces should someone have to be able to host something at their own house? Yeah, I would say if they're like big pieces, maybe about very big pieces, I'm talking about um, 18 by 24 inches, right? Um, you should have a mix of sizes because no one can afford like not everyone can afford big pieces right so what i had was i had a couple of uh i had a pile of really really small watercolor pieces about 20 25 of them and then i had okay. the small you can see these eight by tens they're just small and quite affordable so okay. i would say more of that size, eight by 10, about at least, um, I would say, depending on the crowd that's gonna come there, I will have at least about 15 to 20 pieces of the medium pieces. And okay. then five to six 
relatively big ones. So about 2025? Yeah, 2025. Uh, uh, medium pieces and you can always have tiny ones where you can uh, sell it for a very affordable price you know uh -huh. small watercolor pieces and i also think that uh, in, when it comes to framing sri lanka is far behind the here okay. people have stand standard frames yeah you can buy it anywhere like any store you like your convenience store you can go and get like an eight by ten frame or okay. eleven by fourteen but that that's that's a little um discouraging when it comes you know if people buy your art and then they have to spend all this effort to frame it to frame it that yeah. is another like uh, opportunity there in Sri Lanka for people to explore you know framing uh -huh. it all it, it all has to kind of develop together uh -huh. You know, because nobody has ever thought of unless you, when it comes to framing, if you want a good quality frame, you think about Kent and it's uh -huh. not affordable for many people, right? It has to kind of uh, develop together. Like it, it doesn't have to be uh, art framing, right? It, it can be photographs or whatever, but it should sure. be easily accessible because now we have to go and give it to somebody to frame it. It's a bit but, of a mission. Yeah, but here you just buy the standardized frame and uh, you just put your picture in it all right it is so simple now nah, we're here definitely it's a bit of a mission as far as i know mm. yeah i think that that that's why it's kind of discouraging for people that as long as it's on a canvas it's fine you can hang it but uh -huh. um here we have panels and we have tape uh, artwork on paper so well, it's, it's a big avenue to explore, and I think there are a lot of opportunities that hasn't been tapped in Sri Lanka. So it's just up to you guys to, you know, promote it and keep promoting it. It's just don't give up. I think you can create that mindset in people. If you, if people, if people can be brainwashed with when it comes to politics and all sorts of other stuff, why can't people be brainwashed to <laughs> by art? I'm telling you. Or to enjoy art for that matter. It doesn't have to be to just to buy, to enjoy art. Mm. You know? It it has to start from there. Like people has to appreciate it. So as long as you uh, keep your artwork inside your house without um, knowing what to do and thinking, oh, I, I cannot afford a gallery to, or, you know, do an exhibition, you should start small and get creative and just go ahead with it. Yeah, think small. That's kind of, I think the key is to do collaborations, not to do it, try to do it by yourself. So, I, yeah, I wanted to talk about music, art, cooking, movies. You know, you're a movie buff too. So, you, I think you I'll... said cooking, right? Yeah. Cooking I, I, yeah, okay. I heard it as cocaine. I was like, I said, I said cooking, but what I meant was baking. No, I heard it as cocaine. Cocaine. No, 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 no. This is going on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a minute to re realize that you well, said yeah. cooking, cocaine. Cocaine and cooking. This is going on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cooking, of course. Yeah, I'm only doing culinary stuff these days, you know, desperately looking for uh, flavorful plus healthy food because oh my god all the healthy food here are bland i'm telling you i have never had a satisfying meal here okay when i first came here okay i thought hey barbecue was really tasty or whatever but you get tired of it pretty fast because they put so much sauces and sugar into it um chinese here like chinese in sri lanka is so spicy but it works with us right even though that it's overly spicy chinese here is extremely sweet mm. even yeah. including indian and then uh, mexican food here is just loaded with cheese and there's no authenticity in any of these kind of even though that like there are so many Hispanic people here. There are a few authentic Hispanic restaurants, but most of the Mexican places are like just, I don't know, all Americanized fusion stuff, right? So nothing is um, satisfying for me. I sometimes like 
I think I sometimes feel like I would do anything to go to Sri Lanka and have a lump ride. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Yeah, to me, to me, the food looks really good over there, but it doesn't taste as good as it looks. No, except maybe the Asian ones, like the Korean food and the Vietnamese okay. food, but they are also very limited. They have, they have only a few selection of dishes that would appeal to the same, you know, Americans here. So they don't hmm. really uh, give us the entire thing. Okay. You know they have a very uh, few choices, but they're they're good compared to the American food and the Hispanic and the Chinese. My God, I I am never having Chinese here. I don't know, maybe in New York or in Washington, maybe they have authentic places, but here it's just I don't know. You feel so unhealthy after you have that kind of a meal. You feel like you have poisoned yourself with sugar. It sure does feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. I want to just come to like trying to have upper and idia upper and you could pay a visit to Long Island where the largest Sri Lankan American community uh, How are we going resides. to do that now? I'm telling you we, uh, unless this they oh, find it lockdown, like, damn I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Can't do anything. Mm. I I probably they must be closed down. No. Um, I, I, I see, operating, see. Maybe just take out or whatever. Probably. Mm. But they had, I a, just miss they had quite the a lot variety of joints. Of food mm. That we have here, everything. Comfort food here is very unhealthy, right? All the casseroles and the fried chicken and dumpling, chicken dumpling soup. Everything is just so um, fattening. But comfort okay. food in Sri Lanka can be... I mean, I can't call it like extremely healthy, but balanced, isn't it? It's not like yeah. overly uh, unhealthy. I feel very dissatisfied when it comes to <laughs> food here. I um, I try to make whole sambal and um, I still have a little bit of sprats on the left from what I what my mom sent. You you get like stocks sent over yeah, to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I try to make a Sri Lankan meal at least once a week. Okay. And then yeah, I can I can even have kosamba with these crackers they have here. You know, kosamba and crackers. Oh yeah, and yeah. I feel like I want to have some Sri Lankan and I can't make the effort to you know make an entire meal. I just have some kosamba and crackers and whatever. Okay. Our palate yeah, yeah, yeah. is made such a way that you need all those True. bursting flavors, right? Yes. Yeah, people find everything tastes like, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> the same, yeah, same flavors. You go to, um, you go to a barbecue place uh, here and then say you go to a different place, another barbecue place. Everything is the same. Okay. The Hispanic restaurants, they serve the same dish, same flavor. I don't know. It's, it's unbelievable how identical they are. Okay. You know, it's not like that in Sri Lanka, right? Not really, no. Yeah, I mean, you Each go to different unique. places because they have they have something unique about um, their places. True. It's very, what do you call it, diverse? So, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it is. They have their own unique uh, taste, most of the places. Yeah, even, even though it's like, just rice and curry, even most if of it's the just places a have a different bakery. Yeah. Even if it's just a fish exactly. bun. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just how... Do you, you remember Tasty Caterers, like near Royal College? If you have pastries from then, then if you go to a place like Caravan, they're totally different, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I prefer the more localized uh, pastry shops, the less posh ones. Yeah, I know. Like Saiva Tastes better. Yeah. yeah, like I'm talking about pastry shops, but yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Same, same. I even both. like the places that cyber curry that uh, serves roast pong with the uh, sea sambal meat or whatever. Yeah, I will, I will come to Sri Lanka just for the food, the flavorful seafood. And seafood here, we don't have fresh seafood because we're not close to the beach. Mm -hmm. And most of the seafood that we get is frozen. 
and this shrimp, some of the shrimp are like already boiled and cooked and frozen and they have zero flavor in it. Yeah, the one thing that keeps me here is the food. <laughs> <laughs> I love the food. Yeah, yeah I mean, as once, once Chatu goes to college, like I'm going to come and like spend a lot of time in Sri Lanka. Probably that's a good time to travel and paint and explore all the food. I sure hope this thing is going to be over very soon, the COVID madness. And uh, I do too. So yeah, I do think this was a great introduction and a great uh, conversation today. So and I really do hope I, I was able to provide some insight on how to actually go about uh, promoting art. Thanks everyone for listening in and thank you for sharing your time with us. And I'm hoping to uh, have you on board on a future episode. Awesome. I had, uh, yeah, I had a very good time and I enjoyed every bit of it.